Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. I'm not sure which, what is the hardest part of leading worship. I've come to the conclusion it's managing the technical stuff. I've yet to get to grips with the new music device, but I did come in on Thursday and program it and ran it through about three times to make sure that it did what it did. But as long as the gremlins haven't got to it over the weekend, we should be all right. We're going to start with singing our first hymn, number 204 in our Mission Praise hymn books, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, Great David's Greater Son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. So let's stand to sing. saying together the prayer printed at paragraph four. So we say, Heavenly Father, we know that you are here with us. Help us to confess our sins, to sing your praises, to join in prayer, and to 
and hear who urges through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from every crime. In just a few moments of quiet as we really take to heart the wonder of that promise. <coughs> So let us confess our sins to Almighty God as we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men, in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own independence. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Give us all that is ours and grant that we may serve you in the rest of life. May God, our Heavenly Father, who has promised to forgive all those who sincerely turn to Him, have mercy upon each one of us, deliver us from our sins, and strengthen us for His service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the page be. Say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it be. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us stand and pray together the responses printed in paragraph 9a. Let us praise God for his mercy. O Lord, open our lips. Let us worship the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now the shadow of Let us praise the Lord, and we're going to do that now by singing our second hymn, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing, number 404 in our mission.
take a seat as we come to our reading this morning, which is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, and Andrew is going to read it for us. For those of you that may have the uh, church Bibles, it's on page 1173. Oh. So it's uh, Ephesians verses 3 to 14. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing of Christ. He chose for us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious name, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all the wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the time reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were first put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. With all the restrictions, the stresses and the strains and the problems that COVID has forced on our lives over the best part now of nearly two years, I find in these few verses from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, a wonderful encouragement, wonderful assurance. Paul reminds us that we are truly and richly blessed in so many ways. Our faith in God, our belief in Jesus as the Son of God and our Saviour, assures us that we are blessed, we are loved, we are adopted, we're redeemed, forgiven, chosen and sealed with a promise. That's quite a list. The first thing to note from this reading is that God has blessed us. Not might bless us or will bless us, but has already blessed us, blessed us in Christ. All these blessings are given to us through Jesus, our belief in him and acceptance of him as our Lord and Saviour. In verse 4, Paul writes, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world. God has had a plan for each one of us from the beginning of time. Not just us, but everyone, everyone of his creation. I shall come back to that in a moment. God has a plan for all and wants all to turn to him, to reach out to him, to believe in him and accept his authority in and over 
our lives. Whether from the patriarchs and the prophets of the Old Testament through whom God spoke, to the ministry and teaching of Jesus himself, and then through the work of the apostles spreading the good news through scripture, the written word of God, and then by the work of Christian witness in the centuries that followed. God has spoken and still speaks to all those who would listen, so that all have the opportunity to respond and reach out, to believe in God and his son, and then in Paul's words from our reading, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ, for we are in Christ when we turn to him. So what are these blessings? Verse five. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. The New Revised Standard Version of the Bible translates this verse as saying, adopted as his children through Jesus Christ. Adopted as children in love. The first blessing is that assurance of God's love and the adoption into his family to be his children, children of that heavenly father, loved, wanted, included and protected. And then verse six reminds us that we have the blessing of God's grace. That word often explained as an acronym for God's riches at Christ's expense. The assurance that by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, taking upon himself the punishment which we deserve, Jesus redeemed us. He paid the price for our sin our wrongdoing, our failings, so that we might be forgiven and made right with God our Father. So those first blessings of God's love, our adoption as his children, and God's grace that through Christ we are redeemed and forgiven, when we reach out to him in faith and repentance, forgiven in the here and now. But what of the future? There may be many things wrong with and in the world today, but perhaps it was ever thus. But in verses nine and 10, we learn of another blessing. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. However rotten the world has been, maybe today and probably will be tomorrow, there will come a time when unity will prevail and all things will be made right and perfect, brought together through and under the authority of Jesus. However weak, sinful and rotten we have been, and dare I say it sometimes, still are from time to time. We have that wonderful assurance of God's blessing and the wonder, the mystery. The one such blessing is that God sent his son into the world that we might be redeemed and forgiven and become holy and blameless children of God. Towards the end of our reading, Paul reminds us again in verse 12, of God's plan for each one of us from the very start. We who were first put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. The we to whom Paul refers were the Jews. Paul was a Jew. And the first Christian believers who also put their trust, their faith, their confidence in Jesus, the long promised Messiah and Saviour. But Paul in the letter doesn't leave it at that. He goes on to say, and you, the Gentiles, were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. God's plan was, God's plan is for all, Jew and Gentile alike, for every believer, all, however and whenever they come to faith and believe in Jesus. We're marked and sealed with a guarantee, a promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit, 
the spirit of God and the spirit of Jesus, the power and presence of both who enter our hearts and minds and changes our lives and changes them for the better. We receive that promise now today as a deposit, as a down payment for all that God has promised to all that is to come. People of this world, worldly people, live out their lives for themselves and perhaps their own glory. But in contrast, the people of God, the children of God, live out their lives for God, according to his will and his purposes and for his glory, not our own. For many, the last two years or so have been very hard and may continue to be in the months ahead. They may well be difficult, but the promise, as our reading reminds us, is that we, who like Paul and those first believers, put our hope and trust in Jesus and have that wonderful assurance that we are indeed blessed, loved, adopted into his family. By faith in Jesus, we're redeemed, forgiven, chosen, and sealed with that wonderful promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to encourage and guide us on our Christian journey, however tough the going may be. When we truly embrace that reality, the wonder and the mystery of it, then our outlook on the world, on our lives with all its many problems, will be very different. We can push to one side any worry or fear and draw on those extraordinary blessings which Paul this for us today. No wonder then that Paul wrote, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every blessing in Christ. So whatever this new year throws at us, count our blessings, especially those which God showers upon each one of us and each and every believer. Amen. We're going to stand to sing once more. God has a plan for each one of us. A plan from the very beginning. And our next hymn, number 189 in our hymn books, is God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. So let's stand to see.
God's blessing fall upon each and every one who believes in Jesus. We're going to let you stand and say together the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying in the presence of God and in the presence of each one, the presence of each other, what we believe. And so we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Jesus. Please do take a seat as sounds I'm going to lead us in our intercessions this morning. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our loving Heavenly Father, as we begin a new year, we start our prayers today by looking back with thankfulness. We thank you that through all the uncertainties of the year gone by, you have remained the sovereign Lord and King of creation. We thank you that Jesus has remained the Lord of all things, the first fruits from among the dead, and our great hope in life and death. Thank you that your church has continued to grow in every corner of the world. Thank you for the fruit that there has been. Thank you for every work prompted by faith expressed in love and with hope. We thank you, loving Father, for every provision of your hand, for the provision of our homes, our families, times of rest and refreshment, those whom we love and those who love us. We thank you for our church family, for the fellowship that we enjoy. Forgive us, Father, when looking back, we only notice those things that are hard. And help us always to be thankful as your people for those things that you have graciously and kindly given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also look ahead to the year before us with great confidence. We thank you, loving Father, that although the details of this year are yet unknown, that when the times reach their fulfillment, all things in heaven and on earth will be brought together under Christ. Thank you that this year we'll see the speed and growth of his kingdom. And we pray that we would be humble and receptive to his work in our lives, in us and through us. And we pray that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done this year ahead. We pray especially for those who are fearful of what might, uh, what might be. We remember that word from the Psalms, that those who trust in you, fear no bad news with hearts that are steadfast and trusting in you. And we pray that you would banish any fears with a sure knowledge of your love for us, your control of all things, and the goodness 
of your purposes for each of us as your people. We pray for this year ahead for us as your people, the church. We pray we'd be faithful in fulfilling the commission you've given us to be lights for you. You say to us that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. And so we pray that 2022 would be a year in which we live out this privileged vocation that you have given us. And that we would do that in every sphere of life. And that you would bless those endeavours and bring much lasting fruit from them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, on the cusp of a new year, we look up to you. And we pray that this would be a year where we get to know you better, love you more truly, appreciate your love for us more fully. We pray that our hopes and ambitions might be centered on your plans for, for our world. We pray that you'd help us to be a people who continue to repent of our sin and trust in Christ day by day. Be our vision for this year ahead, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, at the beginning of a new year, we look around and in a moment of quiet, lift up to the Lord any known to us who are struggling and who would particularly appreciate our prayers at the moment. We remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We pray that each of these people we've named before you would come to experience the rest of a close walk with Jesus. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's love and all those blessings which he pours upon us are quite extraordinary. Lord, for the years, your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us and cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided, Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. And I'm going to sing that one in number 428 in my books. So let's stand and just sing.
paragraph 23a in our service books on page six, we're going to say together the prayer, starting be with us, Lord. And so we all say, be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praises always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives, as well as our worship, be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.